Hello, everybody, and welcome back into the fort. Mondays are crazy for Commander players right now. Um, as you may have already heard, there's been a lot of news coming through today. I'm going to go over the announcement and then discuss some actionable things we can do as a community uh, moving forward towards the end of the video. Let's start with uh, reading what the Rules Committee tweeted today about handing over control to Wizards of the Coast. Um, so they wrote, As a result of the threats last week against RC members, it has become impossible for us to continue operating as an independent entity. Given that, we have asked WotC to assume the responsibility for Commander and they will be making decisions and announcements going forward. Um... The Rules Committee are real people. They are players of the game that we love. Uh, plus, they aren't paid. I think that's something that people don't fully know is it's important to remember that they're volunteers when it comes to this. Um, and they're trying to make the format better, um, whether you agree with it or you don't agree with it. Uh, so at the end of the day, if it's too much of what's going on for you know people who are just doing this out of their own basically free time, um, you got to kind of respect that. Uh, not even kind of, you have to respect that. Two more public figures from the Rules Committee, Olivia and Jim, both made uh, statements about this whole uh, shift. Olivia just kind of talking about how devastated she is about this entire thing and helping, hoping that she didn't let Sheldon down. Sheldon, one of the creators of Commander, and then Jim gave a a big statement about uh, just the safety of everybody and uh, it becoming too big of a cross to bear, basically. Um, I'm showing some of this stuff on the screen. So you could just empathize with them that this whole week has been filled with a lot of deep thought, anguish, and even fear in some cases. Uh, so as we move on with the rest of the video, let's keep all that in mind and remember the words of Sheldon Mennery when he said, hate has no place here. So. Um, now on to what Wizards has said in their article after this announcement. I'll be reading some of the portions of what they said and processing a lot of that with you. So they gave uh, a brief synopsis of what happened. This is all on uh, wizard, magic.wizards.com. Um, so they gave a, a brief overview of everything. And, uh, you know, in bold letters here, it says, so today, in partnership with members of the existing Rules Committee, we are announcing that the Rules Committee is giving uh, management of the Commander format to the design team of Wizards of the Coast. So that's the, the bulk of what's going to be happening. And then they have a section here saying what's next. So, you know, they give a, a, another kind of overview of what the Rules Committee has been trying to do for all this time. Um, and they give an idea that they, they're pondering. And I think, you know, looking back at what the Rules Committee talked about um, before of working closely with Wizards to better the pregame discussion and Rule Zero, what it looks like they put down here is kind of uh, an extension of that conversation they've been talking about. So, you know, they, they reference that... Um, you know, they, I'll just read it. Uh, with this idea, it isn't anywhere near finished yet, but as a part of building this with the community, we're opening it up for feedback, thoughts, and your version of how this will look. Think of this as an open beta. <laughs> so here's the idea I'm guessing they have with the, the uh, Rule Zero uh, conversation, as well as uh, possibly looking at the ban list again and seeing if anything can come off or has to be banned. I don't know. So let's just read it at that, you know, and process it together. Um, here's the idea. There are four power brackets and every commander deck can be placed in one of those brackets by examining the cards and combinations in your deck and comparing them to lists will need, uh, comparing them to lists will need community help to create. Uh, you can imagine bracket one is the baseline of an average pre-constructed deck or below, and bracket four is high power. For the lower tiers, we may lean on a mixture of cards and 
descriptions of how the deck functions, and the higher tiers are likely defined by more explicit lists of cards. For example, you can imagine bracket one has cards that easily go in any deck, like Swords of Plowshares, uh, Grave Titan, and Cultivate, whereas bracket four would have cards like Vampiric Tutor, Armageddon, and Grim Monolith, cards that make games too much more consistent, too much more consistent, okay? Lopsided or fast, lopsided or fast than the average deck can engage with. Interesting sentence. I might just be all frazzled and not reading it correctly. In this system, your deck will be defined by its highest bracket card or cards. This makes it clear that the cards go where, where and what kinds of cards you can expect people to be playing. For example, if Ancient Tomb is a bracket four card, your deck would generally be considered a four. But if it's part of a tomb themed deck, the conversation may be my deck is a four with ancient tomb, but a two without it. Is that OK with everyone? So when I first read that, I was confused. But what I think they're saying when, when they say a tomb themed deck, some people have commander decks that it's like hat themed or chair theme. Every single card has a chair or a hat, etc. So I think that's what they're talking about is, uh, you know, uh, like a power level one deck that just happens to have ancient tomb because they needed more cards with tombs. I'm guessing that's what they're saying. Will this system guarantee perfectly matched games? No, that might be fine at your table, but if it gets the conversation started from a sharing, from a sharing under shared understanding, that's already great for the table. So this is one of the things that I want to bring to light is they say, we would love to hear what you have to think about this and which power brackets you would place certain cards in. Um, and then they say, we will also be evaluating the current banned cards card list alongside both the Commander Rules Committee and the community. We will not ban additional cards as part of this evaluation. While discussion of the banned list the ban list started this, uh, immediate changes to the list are not our priority. Um, I will say I'm happy that that's the case. I'm happy that it didn't... Because uh, the biggest thing that I think shocked people about this last banning, uh, bannings, was how kind of abrupt and how many cards were banned um, in one go. So I'm, I'm happy that they're saying it's not their priority to ban more cards right now because that's, uh, it would be such a whiplash if, if, I mean, it's how the things are going right now. If next Monday, all of a sudden they're like, here's all the new bans again. Like I, I, I hope that we have a little bit of a respite. We can kind of level back out and, and start moving forward again. Um, but this is what they say. We would love to hear what you have to think about this and which power brackets you would place certain cards in. So I'm hoping uh, that, you know, they have a discord that they, they want to talk about this as well as tw they have their Twitch linked. So I'm sure there are ways for us to reach out, but I think any way that you can think of to reach out to them, whether it is, you know, through their socials or on uh, Twitter or, you know, any other of your socials, or if you make a video like this. Going forward, we can voice constructive criticism towards Wizards about the new bracket idea. Um, also, we need to have a little bit of patience with everyone involved with this situation because this transition period is always going to be difficult no matter what it is, and this is kind of a huge shift. Finally, with the rules of Commander moving from a fan-run committee to the company that creates the game, we can run into some issues with Wizards making moves for the format that benefits them versus what benefits us. If that starts to happen, we can ask for more transparency and do it in a respectful way. Sharing our thoughts with this new power bracket is a good opportunity for us to guide the format that so many of us love. I am just a little flabbergasted because of the, the bands and now this happening. Um, do I think it's time to burn everything down? I do not. Um, do I think it's going to be a little rocky when it comes to this transition period? I, I do think so, but... 
as commander players, as magic players, you know, it's in the name Magic the Gathering. Let's just keep on getting together, playing the game. And at the end of the day, if their main thought is to uh, make the rule zero conversation, the, you know, the talk you have before you play commander um, more verbose and, and give more tools to that, if that's what they're trying to do, let's do that now in our own play groups. Let's talk things out more, what people want to play, what people don't want to play. We can start doing those things with the people that we know at our local game store who come over to your house and play. So we can, we can start moving forward on that, even coming up with what some of our decks are in the power bracket and then sharing that to Wizards or anybody else to kind of gauge what is going to happen with these uh these new brackets that will you know take a card that's powerful and then possibly make your deck go higher i don't know i i'm still a little confused on exactly how it'll work you know i think with them saying some of those cards we can we can expect that um you know you throw a powerful card in a deck i don't know if that you know tier four card should bring a two all the way up to four, um, but I guess we'll see. Does it split the difference, a two with a tier four card in it? Does that make it a three? I don't know. Again, they, they said this is an open beta, so those are the types of questions we can be asking right now. Um, so I'm just gonna end it there because as you can tell, I, I there's a lot of thoughts going on in my head right now. So I wanna hear about your thoughts on the change. And do you have any decks right now that you think will be a four just out of the gate? You, you know, when they explain some of the cards that are fours, let's see, what were those again? Vampiric, tu Vampiric Tutor, Armageddon, and Grim Monolith. Do, do you have a deck with all three of those? And you're just like, uh-oh. That's my tier. That's a tier four deck right off the bat. So I, I don't know if I have any, but we will see. We will see what ends up there. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching.